Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette, welcome to Good Owl Games, and this is February's monthly roundup, the video where I talk to you about some of the changes to my board game collection. <laughs> Hello and welcome everyone to another edition of my monthly roundup episodes. Um, and as usual, we're going to be covering things such as new games I've added to my collection, games I've been playing, and some general chit chat about me and the channel and whatnot. Um, and you can skip around all these various sections as you so like, but obviously I would love for you to stay and hang out and listen to the whole thing. Because it's kind of meant to be watched as a piece as opposed to in pieces, right? Um, but I hope you all are keeping well. February has been a short month, so this monthly roundup has crept up on me a little bit quicker than I had hoped. Um, but I've got some very interesting titles to tell you about. I got a good number of games played. And yeah, it's all kind of on the up and up in the board game front. So without any further ado, I'm going to jump right into the new titles, of which there are two this month. And I'm going to start with the one I suppose I have less to say about. Um, and this is Whistle Mountain. Um, so this is from Bezier Games. Um, and it is a game that's been on my radar since I first saw it released last year. Um, if you're familiar with Whistle Stop, which is a very beautifully made train game by Bezier Games, this game has nothing to do with that, which makes it kind of confusing in a sense. You'd think they'd somehow be related, but they aren't. But instead, this is a game where you are basically trying to build things and you're using airships to get these resources to build them. Um, what's interesting about this one is so you're building these kind of engines and then once you've built them, you are allowed to use them. They are pieces you place out on the board. But when you build something, everybody can use it, not just you. So it ends up being this very kind of interactive puzzle. And if you build too many things, there's a dam and it will flood and your people will get taken away um, and things like that. So there's kind of an interesting mechanism going on there. Um, but what it really comes down to is the fact that you have three actions you can do on your turn. You have three little beautiful airships um, and you're doing your best to gain resources and things to build these engines, get victory points, you know, kind of the usual. Um, it is a ridiculously good looking game um, and I'm not surprised because one of the reasons that I haven't bought this game sooner is the price tag. Like here in Ireland, you, it's 80 euros, I think, to buy, which would be a bit above your average. But when I opened up the box, I kind of understood why there was such a price tag. Um, it is very deluxe feeling, everything about it. Um, and as I've said before, it's ridiculously, ridiculously good looking. But what did I think of Whistle Mountain overall? I don't know, I found it to be a little bit clunky in parts. Um, especially in the first play now. See, this is all based off of first play, so it'll probably be different the next time around. So don't, I'm not judging everything straight away. But I found it hard to understand how the ideas connected together. Um, so I got that we were going to get things, but where were the things going and what were they for and how did they fit in kind of the story of the game? And I was appalled to find out that when I'd built my first little machine that my opponent could use it before I could. Um, and that was kind of like, ooh, you know, this is the thing I thought I was building, but really we're kind of building. So then that changes the dynamic of the game quite a bit because I would be using my opponent's stuff just to prevent them being able to do so. So there's a lot more interactivity going on in here than I had planned. I kind of thought we'd be doing our own thing a little bit. Um, and at two players, the board, well, it didn't feel super tight, but we were on top of each other. So I can imagine this being like a knife fight in a phone booth if you had four players. And I think that's going to appeal to a lot of people. I think you've enjoyed those kind of games where, you know, there's a lot of going back and forth between the players um, that you will really enjoy this. Um, I'm looking forward to playing it a second and hopefully third time um, to see how I feel about it after my initial impressions. Um, but overall, yeah, I'm glad I got to try it. Um, I still, I don't know about it, like I'm not entirely set here. So yeah, that was my adventures with Whistle Mountain that my husband was obsessed with trying to try for quite some time, so he finally got his chance. Um, now, okay, so what's next? So second on the new game agenda this month is a complete mystery and surprise. Um, and so this is Stroganoff. I'm hoping I'm saying that right, Stroganoff. 
it's not Stroganoff. It ends with a V, so it's Stroganov. I've been trying to pronounce it that way anyway. Um, and this is an unusual title simply because um, I bought it without really knowing anything about it. Um, so I don't know about you guys, but maybe, maybe, maybe you all do this. Maybe it's like a board gamer problem. Um, but I like to get new games every so often. Um, I'm very good at like selling on the games we don't play. I keep my collection relatively tight. Um, and I like getting new ones in and then moving them on and things like that if they don't work out. So I'm, I'm used to getting games relatively regularly to my, to my table. And it had been some time before we got, uh, since we'd gotten anything from our local board game store. And so when we went in and we spotted this, we we're like, oh my God, it's a new game. It's something we don't own. We should probably take it home. And because of the game's designer, um, Andreas Stedding, so this is the person who has created the ever wonderful um, Hansa Teutonica, and we really, really like that. Um, I think he's also done Goo Gong, which we didn't like as much. Um, so we were like, this has got to be fairly decent Euro gamey fair, right? And just, you know, and the cover looks kind of cool as well. Um, and so we brought it home, not really knowing anything about it. About it. And wow, what a surprise I got. Um, so the minute you open up the box, there is this huge, beautiful board. Um, it's this big, long piece. And then we were setting up the pieces. You all have your own player boards, of which you can play male and female on either side. I was so excited. And what's it about is it's set in, like I think, 16th century Russia. And basically, you're exploring out into Siberia kind of for the first time. Um, and the game is set over a number of years and seasons. And what you do is, so the board's a big long line of these places you can go to. And you're moving along the line, moving further away from civilization out into Siberia. And then when it comes to winter, you head back home and tell stories of, you know, the cool stuff you did. Um, and how this really works <laughs> is it's an action selection game, really. So each of these places you go to have a number of actions you can take there. Um, most of the actions are involved around furs because you're gathering different types of furs and you're able to change them in to do various things and such. There are bonuses to be gotten kind of from the locals. You can set up outposts so you can activate some of the locations here even though you're not there. Um, when I say there's actions, I mean there's lots and lots of actions. Um, and that is the most fun part about this game. Oh my God. Because um, technically you really only have two actions, you have a basic action and you have an advanced action. But with the use of these furs and things, you can kind of manipulate yourself into all sorts of extra actions. Um, and that is the best part of the puzzle, um, being the most optimum you can be or trying to wrangle everything in such a way that it works for you. Um, it was a big undertaking the first time we played. I had a hard time kind of wrapping my head around the extra actions portion. Um, but once you get it, you're like, oh my God, oh, this is so good. Um, and it's, it's so satisfying to play when you can work it all out. Um, I really enjoy traveling along the board, going to the different places. And at the end of each season, the board changes, like everything that was further away suddenly gets closer to you, it moves up the board. So I find it actually, actually to be relatively thematic for, you know, what should be a, a dry Euro. Um, and there's loads of extra things I'm not even getting close to mentioning um, going on here that you can do. But it, it's really, really fun to play. Um, it always feels like it ends too early. <laughs> always. I feel like I'm just getting going when it ends. Um, but it was such a surprise and it was so much fun to play. I was just like, this is just what I needed. I just needed a good Euro and it, it just felt like it had been so long um, and it was joyous. Um, so much so that I've already recorded my review for Stragunov. Um, because I was like, the people need to know about this game. <laughs> I am inspired. My only problem with it is, of course, is uh, if you've watched my videos, um, if you haven't, you should totally go and check some of them out, those five things you need to know about. Because each of them has like a little introduction video where I show you the board and I tell you what the game's about. But it's been notoriously difficult to do this for Stragunov because really what it is, it's like, here is the board, here are some furs, here is the action table you'll need. And I can't find a way to show you how cool the game is, um, you know, just based off of those little snippets, because that's not what makes the game great. It's not the components or the look of it. It's how you put it all together. So it's been notoriously bad. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to overcome that issue. 
Um, maybe I'll just sit at the table with it set up and talk you through it a little. I don't know. Um, let me know what you think about that because it's, it's been problematic and I'd really like to get that review out soon so you can hear all about it. But yeah, I absolutely um, adore Stragonoff. I've played it three times, um, like all in a weekend, all back to back, which is kind of special around here. Um, and I was super, super impressed. So um, hurrah! <laughs> That's the kind of feeling you want when you get a new board game. Yeah, I was. it was absolutely brilliant. Um, so those are the two new games I've gotten this month. I have a feeling I've forgotten the game. Let me to trust, uh, check my list. Did I get Messina last month? Did I? I did get Messina last month. That's all right. We'll get to that in a minute then. I'll add that to the bottom section. Um, yeah, so that's everything new I've gotten. I want to hear what you've been picking up or maybe what you've been backing on Kickstarter. Um, I'll probably talk about that in a little minute as well because something's caught my eye for a change. So we'll have to see how that goes. Um, but yeah, tell me, tell me what you've got. Um, and now we'll move on to what I've been playing. And this is a hefty list this month. Hurrah! Radio then, what's been getting to my table this month? Um, I'm going to start with the oldest game that I said I got months ago, but I have not come back to report to you about yet. And I finally cleared my shelf of shame. And I played Guards Guards, a Discworld board game, I think is its full title. Um, and for those of you unfamiliar, this is based on a series of characters from books um, by Terry Pratchett, who wrote all the Discworld novels. If you haven't heard of him, you probably should have, or at least have your geek cred checked. I don't know, everybody loves Terry Pratchett. He's funny and entertaining. Um, I hope he's aged well. It's been a while since I read um, any of his books. But this um, episode, or this, you know, board game, um, is based basically in the city of Ankh-Morpork, Pork, which is kind of the, the capital. It's got the Unseen University and things like that. And what's happened is some spells have gone missing, and it's up to you and your troop to retrieve them and bring them back to the university. Um, so we'll start with uh, how, how this game works. It is basically you move around these different spots on the board, um, not quite a roll and move, but not a million miles off of it. You have a certain amount of steps you can go and you can go to lo different locations to activate things. So some of these places are places where you can get new members to your party. Um, and the reasons you need members in your party is pretty simple, because if you want to hand in a spell, um, each one requires a specific set of stats. And what that basically means is you're rolling a dice and if you want to you know do better with your dice roll you'll need people who have those kind of abilities um and so on and so forth um so yeah the game is you run around the board collecting people so that you can return the spell i think there are five of them total um and then the last spell you return doesn't really use stats off your people they use your own personal stats and whoever rolls that dice first is the winner um so the bad yeah this isn't really a great game it is feels very random um the moving around the board you know the the places the people you get are random and the things that can happen you are random um the interesting part i suppose is actually the characters themselves and things that you pick up if you've you know read the books you're going to recognize all of these people and it's cool to see them you know and encounter them as you're going around um like the luggage is moving around the board and can eat you and things like that if you run into it so that's kind of cute and funny um there's also a lot of backstabbing going on here now you can play this game with up to six players so we only played it with two so you can imagine not as great but there's loads of ways to interact with each other prevent each other from handing in spells um you know that kind of stuff there um where you can you know get in everybody's way a little bit like munchkin um but yeah my main problem with it was is that it came down to a dice roll between myself and my husband where one of us had to roll a seven on a d8 um and that's that's how it ended so yeah it's i could see if you were a big fan and you had a group of people around and you know you had a few drinks or you were having you know you were having fun um that this might be fun i you know i can i can get there as far as like how good a game it is, um, it's lacking <laughs> in loads of ways, but not all fun games have to, you know, be in depth and have strategy and stuff. Sometimes it's just fun to roll dice and walk around the place. And if you're a fan of Terry Pratchett's work, then I think you might actually enjoy this, but it wasn't for us. <laughs> 
but I finally played it. So now um, it's like off my, I don't want to call it shelf of shame because I left it there purposefully not wanting to get to it, but it's cleared now. So I, I finally got there. All right. So next on the agenda of things I should talk to you about that came in last month is Messina 1347. The game about the plague. Woohoo! So this title is from the ever lovely Vladimir Suchi, whose games um, are really growing on me over time. Um, I definitely think he's improving as a designer or I'm just liking their stuff better. I don't know which, but this game is, well, yeah, about the plague. Some boats are arriving in a town in 1347 and they're spreading plague and it's up to you to rescue the people and take them into your manor kind of for quarantine while you burn down the fire. Um, <laughs> yeah, that is kind of the story. And then you return the people back, you know, to safety. Um, so it's an interesting take here where you're actually trying to help solve the problems of, you know, plague by quarantining, which is smart. But then, of course, you can just you burn the plague away. I guess that seemed sensible at the time. But what this game really is about is kind of an action selection game, a worker placement action selection, where there is a board that represents the, the, the town and on it are like various actions that you're able to do. Um, and so you place your meeple out and you get to do the actions on it. And if there are people there that need saving, you get to save them. If there's a black cube of plague there, well, you want to burn them up. Or if you don't, you'll end up with like a rat. And that's a negative at the end of the game. Um, and basically, there's a couple of different portions or tracks here that are worth scoring or that you need to keep your eye on. So there is a whole section for buildings you can build onto your estate to have all these people you've rescued go in. Your main board is like a garden board and you place people out in that as well. And when you move around it, you have a little disc that moves around it like in a circle. You can activate the places you've put the people so you can get extra actions. There is a set of three tracks, um, one of which tracks how much fire you've got rid of and you get bonuses if you've managed that. There's another one that will let you have more workers, which you probably want to tackle. And then the bottom track is the one I've never really done anything with, but I think it's the one that allows you to um, kind of interact with that, your player board as well. Um, and all of these actions are also just out in the town anyway. This is just kind of a way of tracking them up. Um, the thing I have about this game is that you think you're doing fine and you're really not. <laughs> there is a lot going on. Um, so I've played it twice now. And last time I went in, I said, I'm going to get lots of buildings. I'm going to put the people I rescue in the buildings because they can give you kind of bonuses at the end of the turn if you have a person there in the building of the right type. And I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. I have it figured out. I'm going to do this. And I set it up to do it. And I'm working my way through things. I'm getting rid of fire. I'm saving people, you know. And then the game starts coming towards an end and I realise that my buildings aren't worth anything unless I've got like a scroll multiplier. And I had a very hard time finding scrolls to help me multiply. Some of them were on my, my player board and you have to move further and further out to get more and more options. So the scrolls seem to be far out and I couldn't quite get there in time. Um, you know, there's, there's just, there's just a lot going on. Um, like I feel like I really haven't even come close to wrapping my head around this yet. Um, the good news is though that it's actually, it's really fun and it is quite thematic. I, I like, I like it a lot. I like the idea that we are saving people, that we are quarantining people and then putting them back to work, um, <laughs> which is fun. I love the fire mechanic. I think it's cool that you, you, you flame out the, the plague and that you know every time you do that you go up a track um i'm a big fan of tracks so there's a good couple of those but i do feel like there is quite a bit going on here i think you're not supposed to engage with all of it but sometimes you feel like you should be does that make sense so yeah i'm thinking i suppose as it currently stands is this is fun i'm not very good at it but i will try again to get better at it um, it's, you know, it's definitely something I would show to my friends. And the theme, of course, is kind of is entertaining because of, you know, the times we live in. Um, if only it was that simple to get rid of plague. <laughs> but yeah, I really, really like this one a lot. Um, yeah, no, straight up. I just I, li I, I like it a lot. It is, I don't know. I still need to figure out what I'm doing, but at least it's fun to do while doing it. Right. So I think those are the best kind of games, really. Um, so that is Messina 1347. Um, right, so 
got the two golden oldies out of the way. Okay, so this one I have to talk to you about next. And if you don't want to hear spoilers, you might want to skip to the next section. Um, I'm not sure I'm actually going to give out any spoilers, but in case I do, I'm giving you the warning now because I want to talk a little bit about Aeon's and Legacy, the Legacy of Gravehold. Is that what it says in the front of it? Yes. Legacy of Gravehold because I've been playing a lot of that and I finished that campaign. Okay, so you've had your chance. You can leave now if you don't want to hear anything about it. Like, I don't think this is going to be spoiler laden, but it could be by accident. So we'll prepare ourselves. All right, here we go. So, A Hands End Legacy of Greyhold, Gravehold um, is a legacy game, yes, where there's a story. Um, a Hands End is a game about deck building and fighting monsters together. It's cooperative. It's normally an outstandingly brilliant game. I really, really like it. I like, I've played a lot of deck builders. I've played a lot of co-op games. This is one of the few that crosses over really well from one to the other. So this legacy game came with kind of a story, a whole bunch of new characters and items and cards and things that you'll be able to use in the regular game when you were finished. So this seemed like a bonus because we're not really into story games. Um, but I have a number of gripes about this about this um, most of which is that there's a ton of content in the box which is a positive and the content is really really squares in there are only six episodes to play um, and so when there's this many bonus characters and stuff like that you are getting a lot of stuff hurled at you at the end of the game um, there is so much upkeep to this game that we taught it up that we spent more time setting up the game and tearing it down than we did actually playing it um, there's a lot of things you have to keep track of at the end of a game. There are stickers, new characters, new cards. Um, you have to fill out like parts of the sheet. You have to dig out the new stuff. You have to put away the old stuff, all that. Um, I have a problem with the narrative of this story as well. Um, I didn't find now, to be fair, okay, well, let's just be, you know, call a spade a spade here. Do we really care about team that much? No, not really. Um, but somebody, initial writing put me off from the start. Um, and not only that, but the story itself, and this is about where I might be kind of spoilery, is that you, you know, the game is you choose a side to play as, right? So you pick a side. And so you've picked your side and you're doing your stuff. And then about halfway through, the game goes, well, actually, you should probably play the other side now, even though you spent all this time being invested with these other characters. And I thought that was a bit of a, I don't know. I, I basically it just negated any choices we'd made in the game because if we decided to not do one thing, we had to do it next anyway. And I thought that was really, really lame. Um, if anything, this game feels like it had all of this content ready and made and didn't have anything written around it and very quickly shoved together some sort of story just to be able to get all the content out there. Because the And this is, the, okay, so this is the, the flip side of this. We didn't enjoy the theme stuff or the story stuff at all, but that's probably us. I'm not going to deny it. I'm not big on story. However, the game portion of this is outstanding. Oh my God, we had so much fun with the new characters. The bosses are ingenious. I loved all the new items and the spells and the way everything worked together. Like the game part of this is brilliant. We had so much fun with that. I wish there had been more of that, but instead there was so much upkeeping and bookkeeping. It was, it really took away from the, what the game's really about, which is building your deck and fighting cool things. So um, that this is my this is my experience of it. We like I uh, finished the we we played like the last four games or something in a day just because we wanted to finish it so much. We we're like let's just get this out of the way. Um, and I feel kind of sad for that because obviously there's a lot of time and effort has been put into making this game. And this is just my experience with it. Maybe other people will enjoy that kind of story stuff more than we did. But the game itself is outstanding. So, um, yeah, I don't know what to make of this. Like, legacy, wah, wah, stuff, yes. Um, <laughs> but I'm just glad I finished it, which means now I can just play and end with the new legacy stuff put in. And there was a lot of cool stuff put in. So, yeah, so that's been my adventures with it. Um, <laughs> end spoilers. I hope, I don't know, I hope I didn't ruin anything for anybody. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of one of the big plays over the past month was the push to finish that. Really very few games in it. Um, I don't know if you've played Aeon's End before. Um, what do you think about legacy games? Not entirely sold on legacy games, to be honest. 
Um, I just, I kind of like to have a game I can just take up and put down and put away again. Although you can have, can have some amazing experiences with games, you know, that continue and play over time as well. And just tell me some of your favourites, because like I assume mine is, has to be Gloomhaven, I think, has a great story to it. So does um, Rise of Fenris from Stonemaier Games. That was a really interesting kind of campaign game as well. So let's hear about some of your favourites. So I think I've time to do one more game. I think I have two more on my list. Let's see, what do we got? I'll go with option B, because I don't often talk about things for Kickstarters. And I'll see what people make about this, because this is something that's been on my mind a little bit. So um, I'm going to talk about Tang Garden from Thunder Griff Games. And I'm not going to lie, the reason I'm talking about this is because I saw an ad for their upcoming Kickstarter, where there are going to be some expansions for Tang Garden. So... Let's start this um, at the beginning. So Tang Garden is a stunningly beautiful 3D game about basically having people in a garden. It's kind of set in like the golden age of China. Um, so it's all kind of very oriental, although I'm not a big fan of that word. Um, and it's, a, yeah, it's a beautiful garden. And the game scores or gives you points basically on what these characters can see. And you are building the garden. You're the garden architect. So, for example, you might have a character who gets points based on how many water tiles they can see in front of them. So you're going to want to build a board in such a way that there are water tiles right in front of them. So the board is like a big square and everything in it is three dimensions. There are like back backdrop vistas. You can put down trees and bridges and there are flowers and fish and animals and things that go down. And there are tiles then that you build out um, to do this. Um, it's a it's a really lovely game it's very chill as well it's very relaxed like this isn't a super competitive title and it's gorgeously made and I only have the retail edition I don't have any fancy kickstarter stuff um because you get like 3d little pagodas yeah along with all your trees like it's it's it is really really lovely it does have issues however um, the main one being symbols. Um, so everything kind of connects via symbols. So if I say someone wanted to see water tiles, well, they have water symbols on the tiles and on the character's little card that tells you what they want to see. The symbols are very small. And the more of them you put down kind of on the board with other 3D pieces, the more difficult it is to see them and connect them up. And um, there's been an effort made at kind of color coding things as well. So each of the characters you place out have a color and the things they want to see sometimes are color coded as well, but it's all very small. Um, I was interested to see that the Kickstarter coming out has like an upgrade set for your basic edition with kind of bigger symbols for you to stick on. Um, so it's nice to hear that they've kind of taken this on board. Um, that I realise that this is a problem, <laughs> which is fair enough, but it's it's a bit of a beast. It's not too bad to set up, I suppose, but there are and like there are a number of individual pieces to set up and put away. But I've always really enjoyed the game. Um, now I don't play it very often because it's very hard, I think, to find a spot because it is it is quite a simple game. You know, it's set collection really um, at its finest, and it wouldn't be the most in depth of our games. But I've never considered getting rid of it. I just really enjoy having it, and. Even though, so I took it out to play during the week there for the first time in about the bones of a year and a half, actually. Um, mostly because the Kickstarter was coming up and I was like, do I still like this game? And the minute we opened it up, it just makes me smile. Do you, I'm sure all of you own games that you don't play very often, but you still love. Um, and Tang Garden's kind of in that set for me. And I'd been considering picking up some of the expansions for it, but they've been kind of difficult to get on their own people like to sell it as a bundle and so when I saw the kickstarter was coming up with expansions I was like maybe I could get some expansions for this game I don't play that's a good way to kill a game in our house every time we've bought an expansion for a game we've just stopped playing it <laughs> I don't know why we're, wor we're wor working on it working on it so um yeah it's nice to to see that I still enjoy the game that it really warms my heart to take it out and to play it and I found that once we got playing, it didn't take us too long to remember. There's a couple of kind of corner case things. I just, I wish everything could just be a little bit clearer, which is funny for a game all about vision. Um, but overall, I really enjoy it. So um, yeah, I don't know if any of you own it or you've thought about owning it. Um, I'm not sure it's a game for everybody. Um, 
yeah I think it's kind of special I think it's I think it's one of those that it's beautiful you take it out once in a while and appreciate it and then maybe put it away I don't know maybe that's just me do, do you have Tang Garden have you like played it to death <laughs> I doubt it but yeah so that's me and keeping my eye on that Kickstarter I'm sure it's going to be entirely outside of my price range anyway but sure we'll have a look and see what happens when it comes up because it made me think about Tang Garden a game I hadn't played in quite some time right so that's not all the games I've been playing but that's all I'm telling you about if, if you want to know actually what I'm playing all of the time you should totally come and check out my social media accounts where I post pictures of pretty much everything I play so you can keep more up to date with the monthly roundup than just this video um because you know i have to edit it down <laughs> and whatnot so um i want to hear what you've been playing what's been getting to the table this month um yes <laughs> um, i'm like i'll just hum my way through how i finish this sentence but yeah i definitely want to hear what you guys have been up to you you often have some great suggestions um because it also looks like imperial steam shipped yesterday from germany so we'll have to wait till the next monthly roundup for that one because it ain't here yet but um, i'm holding out hopes that i'll come back with a report soon um brilliant so i'm looking forward to hearing all that okay so i'm going to move on to the personal bits or the chit chat section if you want to roll over there with me um i'm looking forward to seeing you on the other side Ooh, well doesn't feel like I'm really in my body today. I don't know if this ever happens to anybody else, but it happens to me sometimes where I'll start talking out loud and it sounds like someone else is talking and they're just talking away. My brain's not really there. So I'm hoping what I've said meant something. Yeah, I'm just a little bit, um, a little bit out of sorts today. Um, but yeah, so another monthly round of hurrah. We made it this far. That's brilliant. Um, some updates for the month. You might have noticed that um, I'm exceptionally well lit at the moment you can't see my giant light i got some new lights finally i had been using those soft boxes i bought from amazon for a long long time i used to have a pair of them so i'd have one like literally right here and i'd one like over there um and now i have one single light and it is ginormous I'll, I'll put up the photo i took a photo to show you guys what i'm working with here um so it was really really nice to be able to upgrade that um but of course the fun part was to get the new lampshade i had to buy a new light to fit the back of it so it turned out to be much brighter than i planned but it's been a long time since i bought a piece of equipment for in here in my little office um so yeah so that's been nice i hope it makes me i don't know look soft and lovely because um that's what soft boxes do make you look amazing um so that's been a big step up for me it means i don't have to set up two lights i only have to set up one I'll be at a very, very big light. But, you know, that to everything that takes a little bit of pressure off would be good. Um, yeah, but um, otherwise, yeah, lots of games played this month. That's always good stuff. Working very hard on keeping up with that. Um, what else has been happening with the channel and things like that? There's been a jump in Instagram subscribers. I don't know what's caused that. Um, but that's been nice as well to see more people see my photos. Um, I only recently realized just how many board game photos I take. Like I put it like four, maybe if not five a week. Um, and that means I have to have played that many board games a week or, you know, over time because, you know, the weekend cancels it out. Um, yeah, I, I get it just hit me about how much content I actually make sometimes because I feel like if I'm not making a video, I'm not really doing anything. But that's not the case at all at all. Um, so, yeah, um, and I'm finally getting around to making reviews of my own board games, which is kind of cool. I think some of the review copies, at least ones I'm interested in talking about, seem to be kind of thin on the ground at the moment. Um, I'm very reluctant to review something that I don't think either a, I would enjoy playing or you would enjoy hearing about just for the sake of having something to review. Um, I feel like, you know, what's the point in me reviewing something I wouldn't enjoy? So I'm keeping my eyes peeled for new titles and things like that or, you know, what, what's, ha what's happening out there. Um, but yeah, at the moment, nothing's really, I don't know, nothing's really bet, I suppose. So maybe there'll be a whole, you know, pile or slew of Euro games coming soon and I'll be able to tell you about those. Who knows? Um, what else has been going on? So the other um, exciting stuff is I've been taking photos with my camera. 
Um, contrary to popular belief, I am not much of a photographer. If anything, I knew nothing about cameras or videos or lights or any of this stuff before I started the channel. And that was four years ago, actually. It was my four year anniversary, like a week or so ago. Um, I'm amazed I'm still here. Um, <laughs> Because when I started this, I didn't know how long I would do this for. I assumed as a depressed person, I would do it for a while and then give up. But apparently I have not. I'm still a depressed person, but I'm still here. Um, so I'm not going to question why this is the case. Um, but I'm just, it kind of reminded me of how, in a sense, not how far I've come, but how much I've learned or how many skills I've had to learn to be able to do what I do because I didn't I didn't know anything about any of this I didn't know anything about editing editing or sound or god when I when I think back at all the trouble I used to have with my lights trying to set them up and things like that um I'm kind of proud of that actually I always thought of myself as a good learner I'm the sort of person that you could show me anything and I could learn it. I, th I think so anyway, at least, at least I'd like to think that. But this was all kind of of my own volition. This wasn't in a course or something like that. This is all stuff I took upon myself that I suddenly had to answer. Um, and I think I'm all the better for it. Um, I've got a whole different skill set now than I did when I left, un when I left university. Um, so, you know, thank you, I guess, Good Old Games for that. And thank you all for being here with me. Um, it's odd. Yeah, it's really odd. I've gone through some changes, obviously. It was initially Board Game Inquisition. We're now Good Owl Games. Um, and I much prefer, much prefer the title. I, I reference this every so often. Um, but yeah, it's been good. But anyway, what I was trying to tell you was I've been taking photographs because um, those of you who follow along on Twitter or maybe even Facebook will notice that at the weekend I head out somewhere exciting for a walk and I've started bringing my camera to take photographs. So if you want to see pictures of the Irish countryside, my dogs, I don't know, <laughs> whatever it is I'm photographing this week, um, you know, that's where you'll find all those pictures. Um, but because I've been going outside so much, I bought a new lens um, for like outdoor things so I could like zoom in from far away. And it's been both a pleasure and a curse. So um, I've been going out kind of in my village um, for the first time in forever. Um, those of you who are familiar know maybe I'm slightly housebound. Um, I don't like going outside. I'm not entirely stuck indoors, but going outside is difficult. So I don't do it very often. Um, so I've, the fact I've been going down to the village is kind of a big deal for me and I've been bringing my new camera lens so I've been taking photos down there and then when we head out on Saturday to the beach and things like that I kept getting dirt on the lens of my camera and not knowing till I got home I was annoyed because there's all sorts of cool stuff to take pictures of um I'm hoping I have this underhand I got some stuff for helping me clean it and things like that and I took some nice photos the other day. And for anyone who does take photos, there is a Reddit called um, Photography Challenge. And what it does is that it puts up like every day, there's like a topic or something or a title and you can post your pictures um, that relate to the topic. So they did like a shadows one, they did like water, clouds. And I've been trying to put my pictures up there and it's been really fun and it's been really cool seeing what everyone else is posting as well. So I highly recommend that if you're any sort of like a budding photographer um, or you just like take snaps with your phone and feel like sharing them. I thought I'd give that place a shout out because I thought it was kind of interesting. Plus it gave me a focus for when I'm out taking pictures because I don't know about you guys, but I'm like, what am I taking a picture of? <laughs> because... I, all my photography has been board game related, right? So I know exactly what I'm trying to take a photo of there. Like, I want this meeple to look like this. I want you guys to see the whole board to see how pretty it is. I want to focus on this one detail because it's very special. You know, it's been all a very closed environment. But then you go outside and there's a whole wide world. And you're like, where do I start? <laughs> this is too much stuff. Um, so it's been nice to narrow it down like that. <laughs> um and and take it easy like uh, take it easy so um yeah i've been having fun with my camera um i've also been painting some miniatures i'm very slow with this um i don't know if anyone else here paints miniatures um either but um i like to play war games from time to time as you all know meaning i have a lot of models and i probably should paint them so i do my best to like sit down maybe once a week or more to to give them an old coat of paint 
Um, I'm hoping I can keep going with that and get more of them done because it's very satisfying to have something finished instead of half finished, which is all good. Um, so yeah, um, there's that. <laughs> yeah, and otherwise, it's not been the best month, but I'm still here and I'm still showing up, as they say, um, and giving it my my best. It's a little frustrating that I have a lot of things and a lot of ideas I really want to be doing right now but I just don't have the energy for all of them. There's been some changes to my website. It's the other thing to shout out there. Um, it wasn't working for a bit. It seems to be working now, but it's still in flux a bit, trying to straighten that out and make it look all shiny. And I have a bunch of ideas for um, written things I'd like to do um, to use with the website. But yet again, too many ideas, too tired. So yeah, <laughs> making stuff as best I can. Um, I hope your month was good because February is a short one. Um, I'm sure we're practically into March already. Don't know where this year is going. Um, but I hope, yeah, I hope things have been good. And thank you very much for tuning in and watching. Tell me all about it in the comments below. I love, 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 love hearing from you a lot. Um, all right. So till the next Monday Roundup video or probably the five things video, which is the next one, I think, lined up on the agenda um thank you for watching um be sure to like and subscribe to the channel because otherwise how would you know when i made something new if you want to know that um and as always you can like check me out on social media um and i'd love to hear from you there too might be easier that way all right everybody thanks for watching take care bye bye